facility you built over there, I'm not going to benefit from it because I'm not going to be building it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And the K has it, Cindy Hall.
Also, the 300,000 pesos plus the fees that were talked about. And uh, also, we would continue to receive full property tax payments from us residents in Concord. I think it's a win-win situation. Maybe we can suggest that to Mr. Beasley. Thank you very much. Thank you. After Ms. Marston, Felicia Pickle. William Briggs. Felicia Pickrell, 607 Stratford Road, Concord. Good evening. I'd like to express my concerns over the proposed trash station that you are looking at in Concord. We've already beaten the horse to death about the noise pollution, and I'm not going to continue in that as it's in a state of many, many times. But I would add that the increased noise pollution will be also disruptive to our local wildlife. There will be increased air pollution due to the increased traffic that will increase the amounts of particulates in the forms of burned fossil fuels coming from the many cars and trucks entering and exiting the facility. There will also be increased particulates in the form of small bits of trash, molds, and spores. These particulates will add to the concerns of potential respiratory disorders and diseases for our community. The damage to our homes. Anywhere there's a trash station, property values would decrease. I will be paying more for my home than it's worth. We bought our home last year, thinking that this would be our permanent residence after teaching in Appomattox County for 17 years. 
I'm also concerned about the increase in the vibrations and impact tremors due to the increased traffic that will lead to cracks in the foundation of my home and possibly cause cracks in the ceilings and walls. These will increase the monies that I will have to save and invest in costly repairs. Next, increase in vectors. Anytime there is a waste facility, it is known that there is an increase in rodents, insects, and other animals, no matter how clean it is kept. This increase with the risk of bites to humans and pets in this area, as well as the risk of disease transfer from these organisms. Water pollution. Even if the water is used to wash down the facilities collected in a vault and then transferred out, there will be water and other weather-based contaminants leaking from trash trucks and trash being hauled into the facility. This will come from runoff that will pollute the surrounding lands and creeks. It is absorbed into the grounds and become part of our local water systems for our wells. The answer is not to add county water and have us pay for it as we are a supply for nature. I implore the elected official to vote no to this transfer station. We, the citizens, elected you to represent us and be our voice. We are asking you to do your sworn duty and be our voice and vote no. Thank you. Thank you. After Mr. Briggs, Carol Goldman. I live about 10-12 uh, miles away from the proposed uh, transfer station, but I still think that if you aren't concerned about the community, then you are living in consent of what might happen to the community. So I have a couple questions. Um, when and if will the transfer, the transfer station decision be made? made? And uh, let me ask these questions before you answer. Um, and will, does the, does the community feel, the Board of Supervisors feel that if it is approved, there will be legal ramifications that the county might have to pay for? Um, what due diligence was done prior to the transfer station being proposed here? Have the supervisors visited other communities where there was transfer stations? And did they talk to the population there as to the results of, of the transfer station being there? Uh, was there a community impact study performed before this proposal was made? Uh, I know that I've read that uh, VDOT had uh, uh, done a traffic study, but I think that the, the, and this is only an opinion, I think that the numbers may be skewed a little bit in regards to what those answers were. Uh, let's see. Is this the region where the transfer station would be best located? I know that there is a abandoned landfill on Concord Turnpike that seems like a better location to me, although uh, maybe some other people might differ to that because those people in that community are acclimated to a landfill or even the Appomattox landfill, would that have been a better location because the people there are more acclimated to a landfill situation, even though the presentation made by uh, county uh, waste was, was almost to the point that I felt like selling my house in Cedar Knolls and moving to Stage Road, it was sound so good. But uh, anyhow, uh, That is about all of the questions that I have. I mean, I, I want to be brief, but I would like to paramountly know when will a decision be made and should it have not been put to a referendum vote because of the magnitude of the concern of the, of the county? That's my Thank questions you. and I appreciate your time. Yes, Thank sir. you. After Carol is Karen. After look. Good evening. I'm Carol Bowman. 
I live at 2221 Horseshoe Road, Appomattox, Virginia. I am a new resident to Appomattox. In fact, our family, three generations of our family, recently moved here within the last six months, and we were hoping to have some of our friends to move here as well. And I will say this, I totally love this community, and I love the land here. Now, I do have some concerns I'm really not convinced that enough study has been done on this proposed site, at least not enough independent study. The concerns I have is how much will this cost the county in road improvements? Now, according to some research that I did on how much it would cost to pave a four-lane highway, for instance, the number I got was $1.2 million for one mile of a four-lane highway. Now, who pays for this is my question. Also, what will this do to the property value of the homes that are already established near this proposed site? Now, I do realize earlier it was brought up about Fredericksburg, Virginia. And if I'm quoting this correctly, homes were built after the fact of that land transfer station, the trash transfer station. The thing that I find difficult to understand on that is those people had a choice to build after the fact. Right now, it seems that we're looking at a proposed site where their homes are already there. <coughs> Those residents do not have that same choice. Also, Fredericksburg is a little bit different in my mind. It has a much larger population and a smaller area. If you've ever traveled through Fredericksburg, it easily takes 20 minutes to go one mile during rush hour. The environmental study, I'm not so sure about the possibility of the water contamination. I understand many people in that area have wells in that area. They also have farm animals. I've heard about a spring that is also in that area. So I'm very concerned about the health of the citizens and any farm animals. Safety concerns with increased traffic. Now very simple statistics indicate the more traffic, well, the more accidents we will have. Is our county prepared to offer more resources to support more first responders. We will certainly need those if there are more accidents. What will the county get out of this over a 10 year period? I've heard a couple of different numbers. I've heard 2.2 million, I've also heard 3 million. Either way you break it down, it's about $300,000 a year. We go back to the road improvements where it costs $1.2 million to redo one mile of a four lane road. I'm not so sure that we can afford this. How many jobs will this bring? I know that the jobs were mentioned, $60,000 in pay, which is a very fine wage, but how many will be brought in with that amount? And I know referendums have been mentioned, simple polls, what do the people want? My time's out, thank you so much. Thank you. After Karen, Frank, Claybrook. Good evening, my name is Karen Angulo and I live up in Stonewall and Concord. Thank you for having this public hearing. Um, it is the um, responsibility of government to provide citizens with information ahead of a public hearing so that we can accurately assess the impact to the community, any benefits or negatives about the proposal, and then give you good comments. Unfortunately, that really hasn't happened. Uh, there's been a lot of changes happening very recently even uh, and the information that was provided on the website does not contain the latest. So it's been very difficult for us to really grasp the, the full scope of this project um, and how it would impact us. Um, a lot of it has to do with the VDOT initial assessment, the one that, um, and that impacts the actual petition and what it entails. And, and we do remember and we do understand that the information given to VDOT was simply from Mr. Beasley, and it's his take on things. They actually haven't done an official assessment, but their initial one showed a lot of skepticism about being able to use 460. The second one that was just released, and I understand you all have been talking with VDOT even today, I think, has, to, has uh, claims access to Stage Road. That's very concerning. Um, and it's interesting that Mr. Beasley claims that the easements would allow him to run uh, lots of trucks, even though what's on the website says that he did not intend to use Stage Road. 
So there's inconsistencies there. Interestingly, there's a lot of case law that shows that Mr. Beasley's use of those easements are not exactly as he describes. And I don't think that at this point, you all have all of the information that you need on that. I would suggest you really sit down with VDOT and ask them to do an actual assessment because I think that may definitely inform your decision. Um, the other issue is the BFI that was approved, uh, zoning change back in 2005. Mr. Carter, you were on the board at that time and you approved it. I wonder how many seconds after you all approve this will County Waste buy the BFI property, therefore expanding this trash transfer station. We don't have the entire picture. This has been going on since 2005 and earlier, leading up to this point. We, the citizens, deserve to have all the information so that we can carefully consider it and consider who is representing us. Three of you are up for re-election this year. I hope you would really, all of you, all five of you, would, re would remember the people that put you here. You're not our kings, you're not our owners, you're our representatives, we pay you to do this. Please represent us, thank you. After Mr. Claybrook, Jerry Ross, or Ross. Bible Baptist Road, and if tonight's meeting has proven anything, it's that you can find a hornet's nest in February. <laughs> I would like to start off by mentioning that the pre-offered conditions by the trash company actually appear mostly to be laws that they have to follow anyways, except maybe for some neato lighting that they're going to have at their facility. I think most of us understand that waste has to go somewhere. What we don't understand is why it should go there. Now granted, I don't have as much skin in the game as some of these landowners that stand to lose thousands of dollars. I'm not here because my children face the danger of heavy traffic and the loss of serenity. I'm here because there are those who cannot speak up, whether they're not comfortable addressing people in public, whether they can't articulate their hearts and their minds, or maybe they're just too young to even understand the heartache and anguish that they see their parents going through. I dwell in one district and own land in another. And I'd like to respectfully ask this board to reject this proposal. Now I understand there are some who view this, view this as a uh, private property issue in which one has a right to do on their property as they wish. I'm sympathetic to that view. I own pri private property. And I'm not a fan of outside agencies telling me how to use that property. But I also understand that none of us are autonomous and we cannot use our property any way we see fit. That's not realistic and it's unsustainable. What is realistic is the fact that your phones have been burning up all week. And it's because of the very people in this room that helped put you into, into this position. So I implore the board to listen to their constituents, and to remember the wise words of a carpenter from a small city called Nazareth. When asked what was the most important duty of man, Jesus replied, it was to love God first and to love his neighbor as himself. We are your neighbors, these friends, and families in this room are your neighbors. Standing in this room tonight, I'm reminded of the power of one. We came together as one after violent acts of both man and nature. We came together as one to cheer on our football team. Our very nation reunited as one just down the road. And as one body, I think we could agree that we just need to dump the dump. Thank you. Dana John. And after Dana 
that long Paul Harvey. John, 169 Rich Line Drive, Concord. I have trash pickup from a new company to me, GPM Goggins. Due to my bill from county waste, almost doubling with no explanation. Why? Because they could. Just like they will be able to expand this trash site and end up charging what they want if they want to. I do not lay my trash out on my front porch. Neither do I set it in my front yard. I don't even leave the canister in view of anyone who drives by my home. I have it hidden under my back deck, just like I'm sure you do at your own nice home. So why would you vote towards a permit for Appomattox County to put its trash in its front yard for everyone to see? The uh, animated video that was shown earlier was not a nice video, but um, it's winter, and those trees are hardwoods. They don't have leaves on them for a good five to six months out of the year. The evergreens that were planted will be planted. They will take a good 10 to 15 years to get to that size to cover up anything that we can see, so it will be visible. Um, I um, have done some research, and according to Fire Rover, uh, they reported at least 282 fires in 2016 in these types of facilities. 40% um, of those fires occurred at solid waste facilities. Uh, the most recent one was in Plainfield, Indiana at Ray's Trash Transfer Station. They can burn up to three days. Um, as far as the traffic, that is my biggest concern as a mother. I have two boys and everyone, everyone travels in that location of Concord to get to Lynchburg. And it is going, you can mark it down, bad things are going to happen because of the increase in traffic. And you have a place where there are people and children going rapidly. You travel, you travel that section to get to Lynchburg. Your children travel that section. Do you want them to be put in harm's way? It will, I, I hope that it is not you or me or one of your family members, but it will be someone, and most likely it will be more than one person that will end up in a fatality with those big garbage trucks. I have talked to many people that have been in those accidents already because it is a bad place. Thank you for listening. Well, thank you. After Mr. Harvey and Lyle Schweitzer. Hello, uh, Paul Harvey, 168 First Street, Appomattox. Uh, I'm here also to support uh, this transfer station as Mr. Jameson remarked. Um, our county needs revenue. Ever since Thomasville closed, we've had no other forms of revenue coming to this county. And you as the board are looking at renovating a high school. My understanding is this money is going to be directed towards offsetting the debt service for the renovation of the high school. I, I appreciate what the people are saying out there and, and their concerns, but I visited couple of these sites, as Mr. Jameson said, I didn't see the, the issues that people have concerns about. Um, I do feel like they, uh, we need the revenue for purposes that uh, the board uh, will elect to use it for. But I do hope that uh, people will put aside some of the uh, misconceptions and uh, accusations that have come forward in regards to how the board has handled this. I don't think that um, it's been a very fair presentation against the board in, in some areas, particularly some of the accusations I've heard over the last couple of days. But I am here 
also to represent a lot of people, as Mr. Boyce said, that don't have a voice that they're willing to come up here and speak to. I have talked to a lot of people who are in support of this, but are um, quite unable to come speak publicly to this. Um, so I am here speaking on their behalf also, that there are people who support this uh, as a way to support our kids and the, uh, the school renovation that's needed. We do need to provide a good education to our children. This, this is one way you can help them. Thank you. Thank you. Philip Moore. Good evening, Chairman Carter, members of the Board of Supervisors. My name is Lyle Schweitzer, and I reside at 5636 Goode Road in Goode, Virginia, in a joint uh, separate county. But our family owns property immediately adjacent to the proposed transfer station. This property has been owned by our uh, the Garrett family for over 70 years. I, like most those in attendance here this evening, don't doubt the need for this transfer station or something like it to meet the waste management needs of Appomattox County and the region. However, I question the location being proposed. It seems that we'd be better suited in an already zoned industrial commercial area that has the infrastructure in place to handle the needs and especially the truck traffic for this project. In looking on the Appomattox GSI website, or GIS website, I noticed that all, and I repeat all, of the adjoining properties uh, in this area are either zoned agricultural or SFD suburban, with Gleaning for the World property being zoned other. And this includes a property that's asking for the conditional use permit. When I first heard of this request for a conditional use permit, I asked myself, why was this not a request for industrial or commercial use, since this is the intended use of the property? And I'd like to call attention to the board that by using the conditional use permit process, the county could actually be a party to spot zoning, which is illegal in the Commonwealth of Virginia. In my research, I discovered that spot zoning is the application of zoning to a specific parcel or parcels of land within a larger zoned area when the rezoning is usually at odds with the county's master plan and current zoning. While zoning regulates the land use in whole districts, spot zoning makes unjustified exceptions for a parcel or parcels within a district. Also in my research, a uh, planning uh, expert defined spot zoning as that act of a zoning commission or legislature body that permits a use for or a group of uses in any given area of a locality in which uses are diametrically opposed on a permanent basis to the uses plan was zoned around it to the detriment of harmonious development. This is not promoting the health, safety, and general welfare of the public. We feel that this request, if granted, would be in direct conflict with the Commonwealth of Virginia Code, and we would request that this request for conditional use permit not be granted. Thank you very much. Thank you. Up to uh, Mr. Moore. Uh, Matt Klein. Good evening. My name is, uh, my name is Philip Moore. My address is 2105 Trent Hatchery Road, Appomattox, Virginia. And uh, I come here tonight. Uh, I too am actually in favor of the transfer station. Um, I've heard a lot of the compelling reasons uh, that are against the transfer station. Pro business, pro jobs. I believe it's one of the good for the county. I am familiar with the one in Fredericksburg. I come from the Fredericksburg area, and I'm not aware of it having the problems that have been mentioned here tonight. Uh, there is, in fact, a subdivision close to that transfer station that, uh, that does well. Um, waste is a product of society. We all produce waste. Um, I know not too long ago we had problems with the waste or application of biosolid. That was a fun subject here in the locality. Um, but I know that that's managed much better and it's done with very little issues uh, for most people in the county. Um, we have a waste treatment facility here in town and those facilities
facilities that are managed well don't seem to provide uh, any problems with smells or anything of that nature. Um, same thing goes for transfer sites. They do have to be managed well. Um, so if they have the appropriate conditions and they're managed well, they can usually be operated with very minimal problems. Um, you know, any site that's, you know, a dairy farm can stink. It's not managed well. I can take you to Charlotte County to a pig farm that smells like death within five miles, and I can take you to another one that doesn't smell at all, and you can drive right up to it. Um, so, and then looking at the county more objectively, um, we have what used to be a closed concrete plant on 460, so concrete trucks going in and out of 460. A uh, little further down, we have a what appears to be a junkyard on 460. It's, it's not pretty. I can't imagine that that's a uh, environmental, environmentally friendly site either. Um, beside our, uh, so we have a lot of areas that you know businesses that are not necessarily attractive. But I'm pro business, pro jobs, and uh, I would like to see the transfer station gone. And I think this site, uh, I've heard some people speak out again, saying, "Well, I'm in favor." Of somewhere else, but you know, who are you going to give that short straw to? Um, so if it's, you know, if it's good for the county, then it seems, seems to me that this site would probably be about as good as any other site in the county. Thank you very much. Thank you. After Mr. Klein, uh, Mark Ferguson. Matt Klein, 236. Bar Meadow Drive in Concord, Virginia. Mr. Chairman, member of the board, so I'll be brief in respect to how many other people still wish to speak. I've been a Concord resident for over 20 years. I live less than one mile uh, from the location of this projected transfer site. As a candidate for the Campbell County Board of Supervisors to represent the Concord District, I find it very unfortunate that Appomattox County would risk permanently damaging the relationships that our communities have enjoyed by dropping this trash transfer site so close to the county line that it will negatively affect such a large number of Campbell County residents. This action, action would set a very bad precedence and negatively affect the tone of the relationship, the relationship between our counties for a long time to come. Uh, I ask each of you on the board to reject this conditional use request. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Sally Coleman. My name is Mark Ferguson. I live at 3971 Stage Road. I ask that uh, you uh, refuse this proposal. In the last 40 years, I've been in the field of land science. This property sits on a massive water table. The property is full of springs and the stream that runs behind it. There's no way you can stop microorganisms from entering those springs and contaminating future wells, the wells that are already there. And as far as the gentleman that says he trusts the government, as far as cleanup goes, I personally wouldn't trust the government to walk and chew gum at the same time. Exception if you do prepare. So I respectfully ask that you deny this ridiculous proposal because you're going to ruin a lot of people's lives. Gary Coleman. My name is Sally Coleman. I reside at 12658 Richmond Highway, Concord. I woke up to a message by a neighbor this morning. I feel very down and depressed. The board might take my home as I know it. My beautiful mornings, views, quiet place, everything I've worked will be ripped away from me. It just isn't right. My farm value, which has been growing, will decrease. My faith in people, with the way the vote goes, might be broken forever. This statement received 68 comments of support. A lot of the same people that voted you into office. This brought me to tears and trembling before my feet hit the floor. We totally get it. Our family has lived with those feelings for 10 years now. Having a neighbor with a similar business, just 800 feet from our property line, 
decided it doesn't matter having the county trash brought to it, stored on it, along with all the other things that trash brings with it, simply doesn't matter. But it has mattered. It has changed our standard of living on our property that we have lived on for 61 years. Property that our children are the fourth generation to live on. And it has changed us as a family we once knew. It changed each of us individually. It has challenged our marriage because it is selfishly placed in the wrong location. Here are some of the effects. The noise from trash trucks, exhaust, filling up our backyard. The smell of trash constantly, no matter which way the wind blows. Rats, mice invading our upholstery shop and building. Trapping skunks, possums, groundhogs, 6 a.m. crows, port, perched and pooping outside our windows, gawking at the trash. The noise from working on trucks, the vibration, air brake noise, the backup beeping noise. With these also brought these issues, moving our grandson's swing from the same tree that my husband climbed as a child and our own children swing from. Absolutely no more open windows being selective to which shades you can open. Not mowing every week, but only when you absolutely have to. No gift of gardening. Sound machine that you can still hear the vibration through your pillow. My husband's gonna have additional information. It's been a year now since unnecessary events took place to stop trash and trucks coming onto the property. And I wanna thank my representative, Eddie Gunner, for listening to our voice and our concerns in our Cameron County. Our fight continues and we are left with deep lifelong effects of the past 10 years. Vote no. Olivia Coleman. Cecil Gunter, Gunter. Hello, thank you for hearing all of us tonight and our concerns. Um, the previous two speakers were my 
parent. Um, as with their notes and story, I'm here to voice my opinion and concern. Um, I am going mainly for the children that will be affected. Don't forget your name and address. Oh yeah, my name is Olivia Coleman. I live at 12658 Richmond Highway. <coughs> my concern is for the children and the parents that are trying to raise them in the original environment in which they bought their homes and property. Um, it's been a long struggle for me and my family. Um, I've seen my parents at all time lows, um, feeling depressed and very anxious, um, which has been passed down to me while trying to live under these conditions. When constant noise, traffic, smells, rodents, etc., invade your property, there are no two ways about it. It's a violation of home ownership. The struggle over the past 10 years is all that I have known on a daily basis in my home. To live in an environment that takes away from daily quality of life just because of its location is completely unfair. I wouldn't wish the last 10 years on any child or family. Having your property suggested to such unlivable conditions changes the way you as a child are able to enjoy your home and land. Not even growing up on 10 acres of land changed the way these conditions affected me and my family. If I had been old enough to fully understand and fight back 10 years ago, I would have. I am asking you guys to be the voice for those who are too young to do that now, to protect their future and their homes. Please make the choice to let these children swing, play in their yards, play in their woods, and roam their lands, as they've always been able to, and should continue to be able to. This is a, mat a matter of the location of choice completely changing families and landowners' lives for the worse forever. Land that many of us have worked very hard and long to have. That is something I don't want to have to see anyone else go through. Please consider the children who, like me, want to grow up in peace and with the ability to enjoy their homes without trash, smells, and noise being a constant disturbance. Um, even if the noise and smells from the site are as low as some of the folks in favor might say, which I don't believe that they will be. The traffic alone should be enough of a safety concern to vote no. Please save our neighbors and the families and the children who will be affected by this decision that is yours and vote no for the transfer location. Um, and Mr. Chairman, um, I would ask permission at this time that if anyone who is in attendance um, that stands against the location of the transfer station, if they may stand. No. Yes, sir. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you. Rusty Nix. Good evening. My name is Cecil Gunter, and I live at 109 Circle Poet. Thomas Terrace Lynchburg. I'm here tonight at the request of my husband, uh, Calma County Supervisor Eddie Gunter, representing the Concord District. Eddie wanted to be here to listen to the concerns of both Campbell and Appomattox citizens, but he has a scheduled joint Campbell County meeting with the school board tonight that he had to attend. The proposed transfer station is strictly an Appomattox issue and Campbell County takes no position on this issue, except we will be sorry to see them leave the Region 2000 landfill program, which consists of Appomattox, Campbell, and Nelson counties, plus the city of Lynchburg. This cooperative plan has saved taxpayers a considerable amount of money over the past several years. However, a transfer station in Appomattox will change that relationship. As good neighbors, we hope you take into consideration your decision will have on the proposed transfer station on US 460 and how it will definitely impact the quality of life for Campbell County residents in the Concord area from the increased flow of traffic, truck traffic, and possible, if not probable, lowering of property values. It may also well affect the flow of traffic for our fire department and rescue squad as part of their traffic pattern, 
may be the same. We would also like to know if any other sites were considered for this proposed transfer site on 460, as it seems like an open target and not very attractive when entering Appomattox County. I'm here to listen and advise Eddie on the concerns discussed. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Michael Chambers. Chairman, gentlemen, thank you. My name is Rusty Nix. I live at 8031 Village Highway, Concord, Virginia. I came here tonight to talk about uh, three things in particular. One of them is this little twig. The other one is my hometown. And the other one is my daughter. Um, first off, I want to start out by saying, I'll get back to this twig later on, but this twig represents my bar of expectations for um, tonight's meeting for Appomattox uh, County of Board. The second thing I want to talk about is my hometown, Concord, Virginia. 35 years old, I've lived in Concord the vast majority of my life. I look out here tonight and I've seen hundreds of people. We've been here now three hours. So many people voicing their opinions, concerns, mostly against, some for. We've heard a lot of people talk about noise. We've heard a lot of people talk about the odor, we've heard people talk about water pollution, and all of these are valid concerns. But I don't want to talk about my concerns, I want to talk about what I love about my town. The thing that I want to share with you the most about my community is this. Silence. It sounds quiet. Sometimes silence can be awkward, like standing up here for 10 seconds and not saying anything. Sometimes silence can be peaceful. Concord's a peaceful thing. It's a peaceful community. It's where I grew up. Moving to point three here, I have a little girl. She just turned six months old uh, two days ago. Her name's Waverly. She's the cutest baby ever. But um, I'm teaching her all sorts of new things. To walk, to crawl. She's trying to walk already. She wants to, but you gotta crawl first. I've tried to teach her all sorts of different things and um, as she's growing up now, I look towards the future of my community. So many young people my age can move out of their hometowns. They can't wait to leave small towns. They want to get to the big city. They want to get to Richmond. They want to get to D.C. I chose to stay here in Concord because I love my community and I love the town. I love that atmosphere, the farms, the families, the friendship. Where the biggest, most exciting thing that's happening is who's going to eat at lunch today at the corner hardware store slash deli. It's a great community. And as my little girl grows up, I don't want to have to teach her counting by counting the number of trash trucks going up and down the road in front of my house. I want her to enjoy better things than that. I didn't come with a big fancy speech prepared or any papers or any signs. I just wanted to talk from my heart and tell you how I feel. And I urge all of you to vote no. Yes, the county needs the money. There's other places that we can put it in the county, just not in Concord. <coughs> and as far as I'm concerned with my bar of expectations, please don't let it fall. Thank you. Heather Carlisle. Michael Chambers, uh, what is going to be 152 Trotter Lane in Concord, Virginia. Um, first off, let me say that I, I've been proud to say that I was born and raised in this community. I'm proud to say that I'm now building a home that I plan to raise my family in and grow old with my wife in that is not five minutes away from this proposed facility. Uh, with that being said, I have a short story that I'd like to share. In 2006, as a junior at this high school, I was a member of the dress code committee. This committee was formed to develop a dress code that would ensure that the students looked professional and did not cause distractions while in school. We discussed how, like it or not, appearance is the first thing that people will judge you when they meet you. I think we all can attest to judging something or someone solely based on appearance at some point in our lives. 
13 years after being a part of that committee, it is now you all who are in charge of the dress code, not for students, but for our community. You have a choice tonight to decide if our community will continue to show its rich history, to show the caring and hardworking nature of the people who live here, or if that will give way to an appearance of literal trash. As you make your decision, remember, you are in charge of dressing this county. What will the visitors see? What will potential business developers see? But most importantly, what will the residents, the people who you serve, what will they see each day they wake up in the morning? The beauty that they see now or garbage? I trust that you will make the right decision. Thank you. Thank you. Carol Precious. Carol Precious, Commerce Street, Lynchburg. Bobby Fulton. Good evening, my name is Harvey Fulton. I live at 1374 Stonewall Road, Concord. Uh, I didn't come with a prepared speech tonight. I just want to talk to you from my heart. Uh, gotta get my breath. Me and my wife met 43 years ago and got married. Started paying the bills off. Started putting money in that old jar, buried in the backyard, and worked hard and saving for that dream home that we wanted. Twenty-three years later, 
when he was able to have that home built. And uh, so we moved it. And it was a quiet place, a Stonewall Road. Since then, we've had 25, 30 homes built across the street. And it's not too bad, they pretty quiet. But now we're talking about taking this thing and putting it about three quarters of a mile from my house. If you go across land, it's about three quarters of a mile. We're talking about the stink. And I know this gentleman down here said it smelled like roses. And we're talking about the traffic. Uh, I hear 75 to 100 trucks a day. We're talking about them running up and down the stage road with the school buses and the children playing out there in the yards. We're talking about the noise and there's just nothing good about it other than the money. And I think that's what people's looking at, money. Like this gentleman down here, and he didn't have any interest in it. He didn't work in construction no more. I imagine he's got some friends that he's here representing tonight. So, I mean, if you look, $3 million a year, but if you look at property values in these houses, once they start going down, which lowers uh, the real estate taxes that you guys will be collecting, it's probably going to balance out. We're having a industrial yard, a track down 24, I believe, that was set aside for these kind of projects. This thing is gonna set right in the middle of about five subdivisions. Let's put it down 24. I ask you to vote no. Thank you very much. to thank you for everyone's attendance at this meeting. We appreciate Dr. Bennett excuse, excuse me, and the school staff for working with county staff to hold the meeting here tonight. We especially want to recognize Mr. Tim McGarrett and his maintenance staff for their diligence in accommodating us for setting up the auto visual equipment. Also, I want to thank, uh, give a thanks over to Sheriff Barry Letterman and his deputies. We appreciate that. If I, if I close the public hearing. Uh, next is additional comments from the county waits, the petitioner. Chairman, uh, given the latest of the hour, I'll try to be brief, but there were a number of uh, speakers, so I want to address a few issues. Um, one thing that uh, came out, and I agree, is that we've been elected uh, to the judgment today. And that goes back to Edmund Burke, who's a particular hero of mine, who said that's what you owe, uh, not just to look at all opinions, but to give your judgment. Um, and uh, that's what we're asking for you to do tonight. Uh, because you've been able to study this in great detail and hear from a lot of people and a lot of experts. I would note that County Waste wanted to be an open book because we understand, and it is absolutely understandable in human nature, that you fear the unknown. That, 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 that's just natural. Uh, but that's why we encouraged County staff, Planning Commission, Board of Supervisors, anybody who wanted to come, to come to any of the facilities to see what actually this transfer station would be like. Uh, so you wouldn't have to guess, it wouldn't have to be the unknown. And there weren't any restrictions, and I think you all can attest, and, and, and this work, of going anywhere you wanted. Uh, because we are confident we're not gonna have a negative impact at all. And we wanted you to see uh, what these operations and what this transfer station would be like. I was struck that of all the people who were speaking, 
two of the people who came to support were the only ones that said, we actually went to the transfer station. And, and, uh, and we didn't see any kind of problem. Um, I would uh, also note that this is, we're talking about putting it on byways and away from 460, we would respectfully submit that that's the exact opposite of what you want to do. You want it near 460, that's the main artery. You don't want it going down a bunch of long miles of country roads. And this is in the commercial quarter. If you look at your comprehensive plan, this is where you can have some fairly intensive commercial activity uh, within a, about a thousand feet. And a lot of those could be a lot more intensive than what this is. As a matter of fact, if you go down 460, you can see a lot of the existing businesses and so forth that will, will not, not be as obscured and not look quite as nice as this would. That's why we wanted to show you the video of what is the visual impact this is gonna have. This is why we have located it exactly where we've located it. About 600 feet off 460 and hundreds and hundreds of feet off stage road. Um, so we think it's fully consistent um, with, with your comprehensive plan. Um, and again, this is serving the local community, including Appomattox. That's where the trash and waste is coming from. Um, I heard a couple of things from the Campbells and Gleam about the East. One thing I would note is they knew that there was supposed to be a transfer station. Uh, those easements were negotiated. If you look at the easements, there were extensive improvements and commitments that were made as part of those easements. Uh, and now that we're asking for a transfer station uh, that I think that they were fully aware of and have reaped benefits from, from the easements. I know the Campbells, for example, the original easement was coming, I think, within 50 feet of their home. And that was totally relocated. And that easement will only have probably 15 to 20 vehicles on it in a 12 hour stretch. Um, I would say that uh, um, conditions are important, and if you look at them, um, that's why there's a whole host, including the buffers, which we think is so important. I, I would note one thing there were a number of people who got up here and talked about what Mr. Beasley said in Campbell County on the apartment. And then I, I want to address it. So briefly about that, um, Mr. Beasley's concern about that was there was an applicant who came who basically didn't have any conditions, not setting forth what their concept plan was or their proposed site plan like we had, not having any restrictions in terms of what their buffers would be. It was just a kind of trust in the application on the apartments, and that was his concern. That is the exact opposite of what we're doing here, of one, coming forward with a detailed concept plan, having yield detailed conditions of what, what, what the county and the staff uh, wanted. And also, in addition, this is an over. I mean, one of the conditions we put in this is we have to have a host agreement before we can open it up. And one of the things it's listing is, for example, the types of operations. Uh, that will be one of the things that we'll be uh, addressing. Uh, so that um, this is, County waste commitment of they want to be a good neighbor and a partner with the county to be a substantial benefit to 